This is the first uh, interview in a video series that I'm hoping to do every week on my blog. Um, the goal is to interview one interesting Cornelian each week. Um, and this week I've chosen a professor for New Media and Society, uh, Professor Tarleton Gillespie. Um, so, yeah, if you could just give a brief background of who you are, how you ended up at Cornell. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm Charlton Gillespie. I came to Cornell in 2002 uh, in the Science and Technology Studies Department, and then in 2004 I moved over to Communication uh, as well as Information Science. I teach classes on New Media and Society. I also teach the Intro Communication class. Uh, and my work recently has been dealing with um, algorithms and the way they're used to shape public discourse. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I guess my first question going more into the algorithm side of it is you've done a lot of work on you know algorithms that determine relevant information so for Twitter um, trending topics is they obviously have an algorithm for that to determine what's relevant to the person and I'm curious how you think how important do you think those algorithms are in terms of the amount of content on the web and really trying to narrow that down and get rid of the noise Right. Well, you know, when we t tend to think about algorithms, oftentimes our mind goes to Google search, and so we're dealing with the entire web corpus. I think we have to start thinking about the fact that lots of our interactions with some of these tools, part of what we're doing is we're interacting with an algorithm. So Twitter Trends is a great example. It's not the main feature of Twitter, um, but it is one of these ways in which we are told what's going on. We're told what the Twitter public is listening to. Uh, and if we don't think about the fact that that's a sort of um, an artifact of how Twitter sets these things up, we could take it as a kind of a, you know, a, a, a simple, you know, transparent picture of who's talking about what when it's actually something slightly more complicated. Right, right. And do you think most people, so when it comes to the, the algorithm, how, how good do you think it is at actually saying what's relevant to you versus if there's something controversial that might be trending, but maybe it's not showing up as a trending topic. Do you think people are aware of that, or do you think that's an issue? Well, I think at the base, right, there's a really interesting question about whether it should be telling us what's relevant to you, a single user, which should it be telling us what's relevant to the whole community. Even right there, it's, uh, it's not clear what trends is supposed to tell us, uh, and people will take it to be one or the other. Um, when, in fact, the trends algorithm is, is testing something even different than that, right? It's what does Twitter think is moving fast enough across multiple communities such that it's worth saying this is something going on. Uh, and to reflect that back as like this is what the public cares about or this is what the public cares about that you would care about um, is a slight misrepresentation of what it accumulates and what it reflects back to us. Right, right. And so in terms of just moving towards just the amount of content on the web and all these algorithms trying to narrow the scope, like even Facebook, right. you don't see all of your friends' posts every day. Um, how, how important do you think it is to narrow that, and do you think there's too much content on the web? There's obviously, it's a good thing that there's a lot of content, and there's a lot of really great content, but then there's also some not-so-great content, maybe the noise, per se. Right. I mean, I, I wouldn't take it to be a reason to say there should be less content. So it's, but there is a kind of, um, we've, we've crossed a line. When we're dealing with the kind of scope that Facebook has, the number of videos on YouTube, the number of pages that Google search covers, we've left a point where we can make uh, sort of human-sized decisions about how to find things, right? That needle in a haystack is just right. hard to find without a computational tool. So we are dependent on them. It's not to say that they're bad. It's just a, a question of, if we don't have ways to think about what it is that it's telling us and we take it to be simply relevance or simply what's going on, then we've missed um, uh, the intervention that these things are making, right? We are dependent on them and they're hugely important. And it's not clear we could find videos and find information without it. Um, but what have we committed to? Right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, just one last question. Um, just, I guess, going back to bringing it back to Cornell, um, what, what do you enjoy most about, I guess, doing your research at Cornell, and um, how does it compare to other places you've been? And Yeah, well, I mean, so one of the things that Cornell is famous for is that it manages to be quite interdisciplinary. We've got a, a rich array of faculty here, a rich array of students, and the kind of questions that we're thinking about, they don't live in one field. They just can't. 
right? So the fact that I get to interact with people in communication, I get to interact with people in information science, I get to interact with people at science and technology studies, each one of them can be coming at this issue from a different angle. And, and in some ways, it's the only way you can ask these questions well. So Cornell does that extremely well. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for your time, um, and thanks for watching. My pleasure. Awesome.